What's up guys, it's Kyle here. Welcome back to Tools Day. And today we're gonna talk about the arsenal of metal cutting tools that I use daily on site. So let's get right into it. So today we are talking about metal cutting tools and more particular, the tools that we use out on the job site to cut steel, trims, panels, and what have you. So let's get into showing you kind of the the array of tools that we use and then we'll get into talking more specifically about them. First things first, the common snip that you're gonna see everywhere. We've got both straight snips and we've got an offset aviation snip. Next, we've got a double cut shear. And then we've got a single cut shear. Now when it comes to single cut shears, we actually have three different types here. We've got a Milwaukee, which is unique compared to the Hitachi and the Rigid, which are both sim similar single cut shears. Finally, we've got our nibblers, and these are the most important, but probably the least known types of metal cutting tools. And I've got a Hitachi cordless and a Makita cordless nibbler. Both of these are great. And don't forget, whenever dealing with steel, whether it be cutting it or just handling it in general, have a good pair of safety gloves. All right, now the first thing that we've got is we've got some snips. Now, these are gonna be something that you will see a lot of contractors have. They're very common because they're cheap and they do the job. These are your straight snips and these snips are gonna be good for, well, for me, what I like to use them for is trim details, small work. They're not that great, I don't think, going across a really rigid piece of steel. So when you get into a thicker steel, I have a hard time making long cuts, but they're good if you're just doing some profile cuts, maybe one inch at a time, uh, maybe snipping some J channel, stuff like that. They are good and you'll see these kind of everywhere, lots of different brands uh, and very affordable, you know, pick up a nice set for 10 to 15 bucks. What I like to use are offset snips. So these are like your typical aviation offset and Midwest snips are probably my favorite. Uh, they always seem to be my go-to and they're readily available at my local Menards, which I love. Uh, that's not a sponsored you know, shout out, I just, I like Menards. Uh, and what I like about these is the way that the head is offset and kind of cocked, you can get in and cut across a flat piece of steel without the steel kind of getting in your way and marring up your surface while you're making your cut. Now the next thing that you know most people will progress to is a set of power shears and common shears are gonna be the double cut. So what I mean by that is they've got a single, uh, I don't know, a single little knife that goes up and down and then you've got two other shears on the side like scissors and it's making two cuts at a time. The only thing that I don't like about this set of shears is that it leaves these really long curly cues. So as you're cutting through the material, you get one piece on the side here, one piece on the side here, and then you get this thin quarter inch strip of steel that is usually uh, very dangerous. You know, it can cut you. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're using some protection on your hands as well as protecting your surface so that those curly cues don't scratch the paint or whatever. But these do a very good job at running through your material and getting nice clean cuts on both sides versus the next tool we're gonna to talk about it doesn't do that in my opinion as well. So next thing that I had bought personally was a set of single cut shears. And um, I had a bunch of my Australian friends on social media tell me that these were great for cutting over the rib and um, a lot quicker than a nibbler, which is what we'll get to next. So what I bought these for was I wanted to be able to cut over a rib profile on a panel of steel efficiently, but they don't quite work as cleanly as I would like. So I use these when I'm looking for speed and efficiency, but not necessarily a quality cut over the rib, but they are a very efficient way to cut through flat stock if you're only looking for a good quality cut on one side, because the other side of the cut actually gets a lot of oil can ripples, and it's just not, it's not a piece of steel that you're gonna really wanna use for a finished application after the fact. So I always 
pull these out if it's all about speed, not necessarily quality. So if we're just cutting some flat stock to cut it down. However, when it comes to a quality single cut shear, I've, I've actually just recently, um, I picked these two up and I had seen this, um, but I, I just didn't think it was really worth it until I finally tried it. And this is a single cut shear. Uh, both of these are. First, I'll talk about the Hitachi. Um, I kind of fell in love with some Hitachi tools, so I thought might as well give this a try. It's got a blade here that you can rotate multiple times and allows you to get a very long life out of one set of shears versus like these other single double cut shears that I just talked about. You basically, when it gets dull, you throw it away and you put a new one in. With this one, I can just rotate the, uh, the knife 90 degrees and I've got four different rotations two separate times, one here and one on the stationary knife. So that is a really cool feature. And honestly, I've been using these for quite a while and I haven't even rotated them. Another feature that is pretty cool is that you can adjust the depth of the cut for different materials. So when you're setting this to a 29 gauge or if you're gonna go do some 14 gauge or 24 gauge, whatever it is, You've got a little Allen wrench and an adjuster here that you can move in and out. And they actually provide you with a set of feeler gauges so that you can put it in there and set the depth correctly before you use the material. So, or before you use the tool on your material. So that's kind of cool. They're adjustable and um, they cut really fast. They're very efficient. I don't think they do as clean of a job as a double cut shear. But when it comes to the speed and efficiency that you gain by going to a single cut shear, these do a really good job. And um, this is actually the Job Max from Rigid. Uh, they sent this out to me to give it a try and I was pretty impressed. Um, once again, not sponsored, but you can, uh, let me see if I even remember this correctly. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So the head just comes right off and you've actually got a bunch like six different attachments that go on this tool so if you're you know an occasional DIYer or you don't do a ton of metal work this might be a good investment because you can put a lot of different tool heads on this uh, and that's a rigid job max obviously I'll put the links to all these tools down below so if you guys are interested or looking to pick something up it'll be a nice handy way to find it so this leads me to the final tool that we use for metal cutting and it's the tool that almost nine out of 10 times my customer has never seen before and as soon as we start using it, they're like, what the heck is that? That is the profile nibblers. And uh, if you've never seen a nibbler or seen it work, you're in luck because today I will show you um, and we'll show you some cool footage here coming up. But what, what this does is it's basically punching little pieces of steel at a super high speed to make a nice clean cut. And what's nice about that is the way it punches the steel, it's called, uh, I do believe it's called annealing, and go ahead and fact check me if I'm wrong, but that's what I was told by my metal supplier. The way it cuts, it almost rolls the edge of the material and protects it from an edge rust down the road. So it's actually a very clean cut. It's safe to handle. Uh, you do get a little bit of a rough you know, underside, but when you're grabbing the steel, it actually feels a lot safer than if you're cutting it with like one of these scissor type tools. And it, you know, sometimes you get those little burrs. This is a very clean cut. The only problem with these is that they leave what we call niblets uh, because it's punching these little nibble bits of steel out and they kind of go everywhere. So what happens is they get in your shoes. That's just a horrible, horrible mess. So you gotta definitely be careful where you're at. You don't wanna be doing it over top of finished product because it will ruin the finish if those little pieces get on there and you rub it and they scratch. So the most important part and the biggest reason we use nibblers is over the profile. And what I mean by that is we're dealing with a ribbed profile steel 99% of the time. And when you're cutting that and you're using either a snip or a set of shears, it, it does a horrible job. It does not leave a good finish, but the nibblers, it almost looks factory. And as you get better and you get straighter with your cuts, uh, most people would never even know that it was cut. They would just think it came right from the factory like that. And we'll get into showing you guys some of those cuts and why we use these tools in some of those different spots. 
So I've been holding the Makita nibbler here, but we also use the Hitachi probably more than the Makita. The Hitachi just seems to be a lot smoother. And really that's just a feel thing. I just think it has less vibration when cutting across the steel. Maybe I can show that in the video. I don't know if it'll turn out, but obviously if you're a blue guy and you got a lot of Makita batteries, this is a great affordable tool. Um, I'll put all the pricing down in the description because I know that's one thing that I usually fail to mention is the price of all these tools. So if you're interested, go drop down in the description and uh, you can find all that information. So there you go. That's basically the rundown in the types of tools we use on the daily. And now let's go ahead and I'll show you a couple cuts that might make it more you know, it might make more sense as to what I'm talking about and why we use them where we use them. So when using the double cut shear, what we're looking to do is you've always got to have your line that you're cutting on one side of these two double cut shears because it is going to leave a long like quarter inch strip of steel and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to run it right down this minor rib, which is how we would do it on site. So now if you look at the product, you can see it gives you a nice straight line. However, these shears and what I was talking about is they're getting a little bit dull. We've been using them for over a year now probably, and we cut a lot of steel. It's got just a little roll up on the edge. So you always have to be careful and make sure you're wearing your gloves so that you don't slice your hand open because it will cut you open real easily. And what it does is leaves you these curly cues. That's what I'm talking about. They get all over your job site and they can also cut you when handling them. So this is kind of the downside, but both, both sides of the material have a nice clean cut without any oil canning, which will bring us to the next tool and why I don't use it for this sort of cut. So here we've got the single cut shear from Milwaukee and the difference here is that instead of having those two scissors like the double cut, or I should say three, uh, uh, one that moves and the other two that are stationary, this one has one that moves and only one that's stationary. This you can actually go up and over the rib profiles with a little bit of practice, but it does not do a good quality job. So I'll show you that. All right, so here we've got the single cut and we're gonna go the same way as the double cut right down this line. And I think you'll see the difference. Okay, so you could probably see how quick that was. Now, what you're gonna notice is this piece here on the left side of my tool, it's nice and clean. I don't know if the camera can really pick it up, but there's no oil can. Now I'll show you what oil can is. When you look down this sheet, and I don't know if you're gonna see it, but hopefully you will, there's little waves in the material and it's kind of scarred up because the actual scissor kind of hits the material and just doesn't give you a nice finished product on this side of the tool. So if you're looking for just one side, you want to make a nice straight long cut. These are going to be really fast. However, it, uh, you know, it just doesn't do as clean of a job. So usually we don't use these, but what's cool is I can go over the rib as well. So if I'm just looking to make some quick cuts, I can go over the rib and it's going to work a lot better on a corrugated roofing where it's a lot smaller profile, but I'll show you here. I can get over the rib and get somewhat of a clean cut. So you can see, I mean, it does it, but there's no way with the double cut shear I'll ever get over it. Watch. Okay, I was able to get over it, but honestly that's only because it was only one rib and look at how much damage it did to the sheet. Uh, it's just not a really good way. And that's what's gonna, you know, we're gonna get into the nibbler and that's where that is, that tool is money for going over the ribs. But first, let's go to the other single cut shear. So now when we go to these types of single cut shears, um, I really don't use these for much on the rib steel. Even if I've got to cut nice long, you know, straight cuts, they do work for that. But where these really shine is when I've got to cut my flat stock. 
And what I mean by flat stock is literally just flat stock material. So just making sure you understand what I'm talking about. All right, so with the single cut shears, what we mainly use these for is cutting this flat stock. I got some nice lines here just for reference. And I'll go ahead and use the Hitachi first. One thing that I didn't mention is they got this nice little paddle down here and it protects your hand. When I go to cut this, watch where the material goes on the underside. Now, I don't, know if, I don't know if you could see that, but when you're cutting long pieces, this will want to curl back up and it kind of protects your hand from getting cut. But as you can see, these things are super, they're super fast and they do a really good job. I mean, look how quick that is. You can't really beat the speed, but you're never gonna get over the ribs with them. And I just personally like the double cut shear because it leaves both sides of my steel clean after the cut. And you know what? Most people aren't gonna go out and buy 40 different tools. So this is kind of like if you've already exhausted all of your resources and you want another cool tool, get this for your flat stock. Otherwise a double cut shear is probably gonna be the best all around shear for you. Now we get to talk about nibblers, the thing that most people have probably never seen, uh, but once I found them and once I started using them on the job site, they're our go-to, especially when we're having to cut over the rib profile. So like I said before, these things are moving very fast and punching out little pieces. However, my Hitachis, which we use probably 99% of the time anymore because they're smooth and I just feel like more powerful, this is getting very worn and uh, it just doesn't do a very good job. It leaves a big trail uh, instead of the little pieces that you'll see coming out of the Makita. So let's get right into it. I'll show you how this tool works. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and just show you on some flat stock how this tool works. And uh, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna turn it on. It's gonna be a little bit louder, but you'll see all the little niblets shooting out the bottom when I go through the material. So the thing to note is that the way that this does the cut, it punches these little punches out, niblets as I call them, and it rolls over this edge. So if you're handling it, it actually is kind of rounded and smooth, but on the underside, there's just the slightest, slightest lip, but it's actually not that sharp. I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. So it's a really clean way to make your cuts and it does a really good job. But what's most important is when you're trying, when you're trying to go over the profile and you want a nice finished clean cut, especially if you're gonna be in like a valley on a roof. So I'll show you that. Okay, now I did not have a snap line, so I wasn't even going that straight. But what you'll notice is that I didn't change the profile of any of these little ribs. I didn't squash them, I didn't deform them. It looks just like it did as a factory piece. So that's the advantage of using a nibbler is that it does a really clean cut. The disadvantage is this right here. These guys will pile up everywhere, they'll get in your shoes, and I promise you when they find their way into your foot, it is not pleasant. But this is kind of the, uh, the side effect of using that tool for cutting rib steel. There you go, guys. That is the arsenal of metal cutting tools that I typically use. Obviously, if there's anything out there I'm missing, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, it's as much me to learn as it is for you guys to learn how we do it, so I appreciate the feedback. And if you want to, go on over to 
Instagram, follow me at RR Buildings, where I definitely do a lot of posting all day, every day, showing these tools in use among a million other things. And hopefully this was educational. Hopefully you guys learned something about some tools out there that could make your job easier. And um, like always, appreciate the support. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified next time a video drops on the channel. And we will see you guys, wait, I got one more tool for you guys, and this tool is epic. You will probably never need it, but it is awesome, so I'm gonna show it to you. Here you go, guys, the Swenson shear. It's huge, it's mean looking, and that's because it does some damage real quickly. It is to cut rib steel. They will make you a shear specific to your profile, so it's got interchangeable teeth or scissors or whatever you wanna call them, I don't know but uh, basically it uses brute force to cut the steel in a nice perfect straight line and I'm sure you want me to shut up and stop talking about it and just show you how it works. So here we go. Uh, you definitely don't wanna have anything in the way because when you drop the hammer, you're gonna lose a finger if it's in the way. Pretty darn cool and I swear that's it those are the tools that I have used for a lot of years on the job site cutting metal and we'll catch you guys next week on tools day thanks a lot